<laughs> had a plan to leave in order. I got to do six minutes. That is. At this time, I'll come to the committee door and Mr. Show call the room. Yes, sir. Jerry Kerman. Here. Jerry Smith's not here. Ken Arney. Here. Ray Lyons is not here. Miss Keller. Present. Miss Collins. Here. Ralph Watson. Here. And Miss Deeks called in and said that uh, she's still not getting out because of Corona. Okay. And I totally understand that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we do have a quorum, sir. Thank you. I'm here just in case you want to come. Sorry, Bob, I missed you. <laughs> you got that basket on your head. He can't read it. <laughs> It's his last one about to breathe. I got excited there. Really? <laughs> and also, our bear's here. He's not on the board, but he's still here. All right. All right. First item on the agenda is the adoption of the agenda. Make a motion to do the second. Motion made by Mr. Arney, seconded by Ms. Coppell. Any discussion? None noted. All in favor say aye. 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 All in favor say aye. Mr. Chairman. He doesn't say aye. The chairman is unanimous except for the guys at the meeting. Okay. All right. <laughs> Next item on it. <laughs> Sorry about that, Ryan. I had to get you back a little bit. Next item on the agenda is approval of February 2020 meeting minutes. I forgot about the call. Motion to approve. First thing we have to do, uh, I did see one thing we had to add to Dr. Ray back on there. Yeah. His name's not on there. Not on there. Diane. Make sure you fix that. All right. Have a motion by Ms. Keller. Second change, ma'am. Ma'am. What? With that change? Yes. Yes. Seconded by Dr. Ray Any discussion? <clears throat> None noted. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, lock sign. Mr. Chairman, that's unanimous. Thank you. Next on the agenda, I went to the budget committee. Of course, we're trying to get everybody and want everybody to come because of the affordability uh, of the. Uh, do you have that thing on the hand down? Jerry, change it up. Yeah, right. It's a bank. We can talk about there. Hand in hand. Went through, uh, they did give some pay raises. They did add some individuals to the two individuals at the landfill and did give uh, one individual a pretty substantial pay raise. So I took what they had, and if you'll look in, and we'll start on the uh, yellow, the bright yellow on the right hand side. Uh, if you look over to the VA increase, decrease, and the, the uh, notations as chairman. Uh, I went with no increase. I did reduce the uh, increase for the employees, which would be our four employees that work for us here, uh, the, the 2500 by removing the clerk position. And then I took the extra uh, $384.97 and, I think 97 cents and placed that into their uh, TCRS and uh, Medicare and Social Security and things of that nature. I did cut the uh, part-time employees to uh, $8,000. Uh, that does give us an increase in one employee. Added to us will be a mapper. Uh, and as everyone else, it has to be multitask. So it can't just be a building inspector. They have to be able to multitask and they can't just be a mapper. They need to be, I, I realize there's going to be a lot of work to do begin with, but uh, after that, we do have one part-time employee right now working while Miss Diane may be taking off quite a bit over her situation. Uh, and he seems to be computer, extremely computer literate. And uh, he's really interested in the mapping. So that's a good thing. And he's interested in the job in general. Uh, bring it down. We're about $39,260.52 less than what our original in, in the salary line items and our original proposed budget that we sent forth to the uh, county budget committee. 
I went through the county budget committee, asked us if uh, the first Tennessee Development District, if it was absolutely necessary this year. I started thinking about it and worked it out. Me and Jerry agreed that uh, we could do it without it this year, but we would like to get it added back on next year if possible. So that cut off uh, about $14,500 right off the top. Ended up, I cut the uh, cell phones. I talked to all the one of my individuals about their phones, and uh, they agreed they would like to have one sprint phone, preferably not a flip phone, but that's what they're going to end up with. So when they go outside the horizon controlled areas where sprint is the only thing that picks up, that they'll have a phone that will reach out, which is probably about 93, 94 percent of the county. There's some little hits and misses you don't get. So uh, we'll move forward with that, but that still cut uh, $1,200 off of that. Went through the rest, and uh, of course, you know, our state reimbursements, we don't have to do that now, so that cut out, uh, according to Brad Mark, $56,000. $500. So, all together in uh, non uh, payroll, we're looking at a $28,154.20 cut to our original post budget, which gives us a grand total of $67,414.72 less than what we proposed. <clears throat> There is one other place we can cut, but uh, I don't know if we want to do it. If somebody wants to make a motion to send this off forward. I'll make a motion to send it. Motion made by Ken Arnold. I second. Second by Mr. Watson. Any further discussion? $67,414.72 from the original proposal. Which one will be easier for you all? Can you so we've got three months. we got to do February, March, and April. Okay. All right. So for the residential news, we didn't write any in February. We wrote four in March that totaled $4,506. And April, we wrote six, which was 9130 
And then for the year-to-date total for that, that's putting us at 59,983 for new building, new home. In February, we wrote three residential additions that were $783. In March, we wrote nine. In April, we wrote three, which totaled 1,551. That brings us to 21 residential additions for the year, totaling 10,471. We wrote six detached accessories for February, which was 225. We wrote three for March, which was 140, and we wrote eight for April, which was 430. And that puts us at 58 detached accessories for the year, $3,319. We haven't done any pulls yet so far for the year. It doesn't look like except for the fiscal year, August and September. We haven't done any modulars. In February, we did three manufactured, which was $100. In March, we did eight, which was 425. In April, we did four, which was 350. That brings us to 38 total manufactured permits for the year, $2,150. We only did one commercial in February, and that was $243. That brings us to 16 commercials for the year, $14,242 total for the year. We did, let's see, in February we had no agricultures, March we had four, and April we had two. So that puts us at 11 acts for the year, and those of course are always zero. Um, in February we had one stormwater, which was 75. We had no stormwater in March, and two in April, which were 150. That brings us to 18 stormwater permits. $1,825 for the year. We had no temporaries in February, March, or April. We had two certificate of occupancies in February, which was $100. We had six in March, which was $300. None in April, which brings us to $26 for the year and $1,300. No brand new uh, communication towers. We did have quite a few upgrades this time too. We had two upgrades in February for the communication towers, which was $1,000. We had four in March, which was $2,000, and one in April, which was $500. And that brings us to 12 upgrades for the year and $6,000. We had no floodplain developments, no rezoning requests, no plat reviews, no BOSAs. We did uh, 12 business licenses for February, which was at 60. We did 20 for March, which was at 100. And we done five for April, which was 25. And that puts us at um, 114 for the year, $570 for the year. We had 13 archive fees, which was 65. 19 in March, which is 95, and I don't have April on there. I'll get that next time. I'll make me a note to have those. And so far, that puts us at 199 archives and 990 for the year. So total for February, we had 30 county permits written, 49 county permits written in March, and 31 in April. So right now, we're at 378 permits we have written for the county for this year so far. Now our electric permits, as you all remember, we went to the online system for the state, so they have dropped a little bit, but we still we can do them on the phone now with a card or check, so it actually it's helping us a lot because we don't have as many people in the office right now. Um, for February we had, let's see, sorry, I've got to find my, all my numbers are running together now. We had 22 electric permits in February, which was 110 state in the county, 1,435 went to the state. In March, we wrote 34, and 170 stayed in the county. 3,440 went to the state. And in April, we wrote 31, $155 stayed in the county. $2,455 went to the state. Um, and so far, let's see, for the year, we have written 
2,533 electric permits. $2,170 have stayed in the county. $44,090 have went to the state. And so for the year right now, our yearly total, we're at 107,758. Any questions or concerns of that report? property that I think was kind of in limbo of selling but they came and fixed it and this is good it had a lot of runoff so we never heard from them or anything I went back to check it they fixed it it was good um, 168 Bluegrass Road Mel and I actually rode up there to look at some I can't remember I think it was a building thing and we seen this so I sent them a letter it's actually owned by a commercial it's a commercial business that owns this and it was a mess and went back up there they fixed it if they put on gravel it looks so much better it's in good good shape um admiral avenue we had somebody call in on that one the guy had dug out the bank you'll see the picture here on the right he dug out the bank to park that old trailer in um i actually went up there he hadn't received the letter he said so i went up there and talked to him and he fixed it that afternoon after i talked to him so he's good to go he laid some rock down it's fixed So, while I was out on leave with my child being born, Kristen did some of the, some litter code as well. So some of these were going to tag team. If she did some, I came back and did some. So I think this one is a call that she had received up on Reynolds Road. Yeah. So this has just had some junk. If there's a barn, you really can't see it good in this picture up here. It's a barn. It's just full of junk. Um, I haven't heard from them, so we probably need to go back out and check that one too. I haven't heard anything. I'm assuming that they haven't done anything with it, but we haven't been back out there. The next one is Buckles Road in Stony Creek. Um, I think that I was out checking Amanda Smalling Road and passed by this, and there is trash literally everywhere. I mean, it's on the side, it's piled up everywhere. So an older lady owns this, and she came in and talked to us and told us that, um, you know, she was going to be working on it as she could. She has a, a church actually owns this, and their attorney called and said that they needed some more time as well. So she came in, their attorney called, so they're working on it. There's been some improvement, but, you know, it's going to take time with that one. She has some people that live with her that have created that mess. And this is one we had a, a lady come in and was complaining about all of Ritter Town Road, the whole road. So we went, Mel and It's not necessarily invalid. <laughs> Mel and I went and drove the whole road. And we started at the very bottom and just drove it up. And I got out and took pictures of this one. Um, I actually spoke with this lady. Um, she called me and was complaining about another property across the street. And so we went and got pictures of this. She said she's going to be working on it. Her husband had just passed away a few months before this letter. She got this letter. Her brother-in-law lives in the trailer behind it, which is where this trash is called up right here. That's her brother-in-law's house that's on her property. Um, she said she's going to be renting a dumpster and fill it up. So she's working on that as she can. 341 Rittertown Road, um, Mr. Campbell called, said he got that cleaned up, we went and checked it, it's great, it's good to go, he's remodeling this house, so most of this was, most of the stuff outside was stuff that he had taken out of the home. 401 Rittertown Road, this little lady, she lives in this trailer, her husband and her lived in this house that's fallen apart, and she moved into the little trailer that you see, the yellow one, and um, she called me and told me that she really didn't know what to do. The house is not in her name. It's still in her husband's name. And he died like 20 years ago. And she wasn't sure what to do. She couldn't get out and clean it up. Um, this is going in the tax sale. 
So she actually has moved out of that trailer. She moved into Court Road Apartments. So she's not even living there now, as far as I know. Um, but this will be going on the tax sale, so it's just going to be one that somebody will assume the mess when they buy it. Actually, we could probably go ahead and move forward with cleaning that one up. Okay. If it's going to go. Yeah, she hasn't uh, paid the taxes. I think we're on. Can we go ahead and vote on that one? And then we'll move forward with cleaning yeah. up on the Yeah, let's do it. All in favor? Well, I mean, somebody makes a motion. Make a move for it. Motion made by Ralph Watson. Second. Second by Ken Arney to go ahead and initiate cleanup with the county attorney and uh, make this happen. Any discussion? And we do have money held back from the last tax sale to the tax sale before that for cleanup, so we should be able to report that if it has been something. No discussion, no. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Unanimous. Go ahead, that's all. Okay. It's okay. The next one's 103 Gracie Drive. That's right off of Ritter Town. Um, there's two trailers on this property, and the storage buildings were overflowing. With like, there was just trash just falling out of it. So the lady called and said that her niece, when they turn 18, when she turns 18, she's moving in one trailer, and her nephew's moving in the other trailer. And so she said, you know, that they were in the process of cleaning it up, that they were working on it, and they would get it done. Drove by there. It's good. It's cleaned up. It's good to go. 157 Bud Miller, you talk to them. That was the house that it's not been done. This is the house that hadn't been finished. It's up there um, in Rome, I can't remember where it's off of. It hasn't been finished, and they called to talk to you. Yeah, basically, um, somebody was leaving. Got a complaint on it. Went at, the door was open, so went inside, got these pictures, received a call about it, and it was someone that was trying to work on the house, and the status of which I guess they're continuing to work on it. Um, there's snow in that picture, so obviously not a lot of work was being done at that time. Well, it looked like they lived in there at the same time. I'm not sure if that stuff they just kind of left or what, but um, they're continuing to work on it, so. Uh, no, this, okay, so this one's the one, if you're going towards Wrong Mountain, there's a little trailer, it's that one. Okay. It's, it's piled full of stuff. So this man that we had written up called and reported it. So I sent her a message. She said that, um, her daughter and her daughter's boyfriend had been living in it and she kicked him out. She, like, she just kicked him out, I guess, a few days before she called me and said that they were going to be working on it. They have picked up some of the stuff, but it still, it really needs probably to be 48 hours and just send it on, probably because it's too court because I don't think that it's going to come, anything will come of it. Yeah, that was the one she called, you talked to her. So this is 101 Berry Hill Road, wrote this up, uh, I guess after we got back, I got back in late or early March anyway, um, called and talked to them and they, they said they're going to clean up, I haven't been back by to see what the process of, of it is now. Here's one of Holly Collins that Kristen... He hasn't done anything yet. There has not been any work done to this one, so this one will probably be one that will need to send a 48 hour notice on. Um, 747 Brown Branch Road is also one that I didn't go to that one. <laughs> Alright, so this is one that we wrote it up. They have, clean, they have cleaned this one up. This one's good to go. The front yard was full of it had a trailer. I don't know if you can see it over here. It had a trailer full of junk and a bunch of junk in the front. They cleaned it up. It's it's good. I went by and checked it. Did you do that one? Yeah. Dennis Cove. Dennis Cove. Chris and I went up there. Um, Diane had someone that came in and reported this one on Dennis Cove. So Chris and I rode out there. Um, they have picked up all of the stuff behind the truck. They still have some trash underneath their trailer. There's um, bags of trash under there. It's not just one or two. I mean, it's bags and bags. But they have picked up some but they never have called. So um, they've worked on it a little bit, but I mean, they still could use some improvement. 
uh, Jerry and I went for a ride. I'm not sure when that was. My months are all blended together. Uh, but we went through through Central, and we got we went up here on Dosser Lane. Um, most of these ones on Dosser Lane, I have had no no communication. They haven't called or anything to explain it, anything. This one just a lot of stuff on the front porch, um, trash that was obvious trash bags. They've made the dumpster out of that car. Uh, cute dog, post, I guess. Ish. Um, this one is another one on Dosser Lane. I think this is one Jerry told me had been written up in the past several years ago and he may be even forced to clean up some. Um, I haven't had any communication with them either so this will be one that we proceed down the, down the path with on a 48 hour and try to get something accomplished. There's about, I'll give you these pictures too, there's a and all in his front yard. Roughly 20 some, 30 some cars right there in the front yard. Made a junkyard out of that. Um, 205 Dosser Lane, they had trash. Uh, actually, I have talked to this individual. Um, they, they said they were going to clean up. This was in a, in a, a wetter period when it was raining every day. He told me he'd get it cleaned up as soon as it was dry enough to do. So I'll be getting out there to look at it again. <coughs> Uh, this one on Happy Valley Road, this truck, from what I understand, the truck has been moved and the trash in the back of the truck is gone. Uh, so that one, that one's good. We went up here to Greenlee Road. Now, I haven't heard from these people that there's trash on this picture. You can see halfway up the single wide trailer there, just trash bags and whatnot. Um, I haven't communicated with them so I'm not sure where they are with that. Uh, this one obviously isn't in Central so some of these are intertwined but this was one that wrote up on uh, Highway 91. have not talked to the individual that, that lives or owns this property um, so we'll probably be getting back out and doing a 48 hour. Uh, the coincidence of this 1702, this is uh, Robert Grindstaff, Bob Grindstaff. He actually came into the office today to talk to me about this and he's a truck driver so he's had a weird schedule with this whole, the, all the coronavirus stuff. He's either super busy or not doing anything and right now he's, he's got a lot going on with, uh, with driving a truck. But he'll, he said as far as this car, uh, had someone vandalized that took the tires off. He's going to get that out of there. Um, get the yard mode and things of that nature. Here's another one of that. Um, he lives in the blue house on this picture and then uses that house as storage. And I don't really... Uh, that's, a, that's an expensive storage building, I guess. And so those were a couple of random uh, Sony frequencies. Now we're back to mine and Jerry's journey. Uh, this is off of Dave Buck Road. I think this is an Eddie Best property. Uh, I'm pretty sure that that trailer or that uh, 18 wheeler trailer has been there for ever. It's been there a long time. Right. As long as I've lived in Central, it's been. And, I, and Eddie, Eddie's talked to me before. Uh, every time I talk to Eddie, he says he's going to get things cleaned up, and then I rarely see it. So this is one we'll stay on top of. 1987 King Springs. This one has been on my report probably a year and a half ago or so. Um, the blue house here really just has some overgrowth and then just some random scattered trash. The real problem is right beside it. Okay, stays there all the time. Been like that all the time. So since I've had it written up before, um, I had sent a 48-hour notice on it. So this will be one that we will take to to court if it's not cleaned up. I don't think it is. Yeah, it's not. Can we go ahead and vote on that? And uh, that way, if it's not made, and the other one, the 1987. It's another one that's been around multiple times too. Can you bet on that too? They put all the, they put all the trash out there and just leaves it there all the time. The dogs, everything gets in. People cost it about once a week. Can I have a motion for that? Motion. Motion by Ken Arnie for these two. 
They do have really nice trash cans, though. I will say that. Second by Ms. Kelly Collins. Any further discussion on these two? That was 1989 King Springs and Hawks. 1989 and 1987. They're side by side. Side by side. And I think they might even be owned by the same person. They are. They're owned by the same family. Not the same No further discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, lock sign. Mr. Chairman, that was unanimous. Thank you. Uh, 2015 Dave Bus Road. Another one that I haven't I haven't heard anything out of the owner of. So this will be one we'll need to uh, revisit. 2196 Dave Buck Road. I have actually been talking with this gentleman quite a bit since Jerry and I have been out there. He's a, an elderly gentleman who used to do some work out of that uh, building. I don't know what he did. He told me and I've forgotten it now. Um, I don't sleep a lot. <laughs> so I don't forget what he said. But anyways, he's told me that, that he will get out and get it cleaned up. Him and his son are going to work on that. I think there has been some slight improvement, but I, I anticipate that he will uh, improve that a lot. Um, he seems very uh, uh, sincere when he's talking to me on the phone, and he talks to me for an hour at a time, so we're best friends now. <laughs> uh, 2554 Elizabethan Highway, this is not really litter, this is more, um, he put in a, a, a trailer and some buildings without permits. I don't think he's come in yet to get said permits, but I informed him that he needs to do it ASAP. And I told him that probably a month ago, so that may be one that I need to uh, contact or... He's still set the same way you're, the picture is. They are. And he asked me why he needs a permit and that sort of stuff. He might have told me he's going to move one or two of the storage buildings. So I think there were two or three on the property. Um, so... Uh, this last one's Dave Buck Trailer Park. Uh, this is at the very end, almost to the uh, Washington County line here. Uh, Jerry, what, there's 12 trailers maybe in that lot, yes. 15, and every one of them it's is the same an one. eyesore. I say send them a letter. So we may just need to go ahead and we'll coordinate this one, maybe even go ahead and vote on it, because I don't anticipate this one getting cleaned up anytime soon. And don't the same guy, Chris, that got all your cars in Hall River when we went over oh, there? He owns it and you know he's going to pay his support and everything. Yeah. Well, let's take him on. Thank you. They talk to the nice chancellor. You're going to vote on that one, but we're going to wait. Okay. Dave Buck, Trailer Park. Uh, if I can have a motion, take it on the court. Make a motion. Second. Motion made by Sonia Connor. Second by Bob Acuff. Any further discussion? None no, at all in favor say aye. Uh -huh. All opposed, lock sign. Mr. Chairman, that was unanimous. Mr. Chairman, what's the status on Nate's trailer park? Nate's trailer park, it changed hands and it's supposed to be getting cleaned up. Yeah. Who gets a call? Nate's trailer park up there, it used to be. It was the online option, wasn't it? Yeah. Somebody really, uh, somebody did a bit of the bullet on that. But anyway, they uh, As far as I know, the option went all the way completely through, so those individuals came off. The, the guy that bought it has already has already removed three tenants from the from the property, okay. so we should see a quick. Okay. It's, I think it's going to be someone who actually takes care of their of their property better than whoever owns it. Uh, these were some 48 hour notices that were sent. Lions Road one has actually been cleaned since they got the, the nasty year letter of the two. Um, 318 Chambers Drive, 261 North Road, 208 Laurels Road, and 112 Hidden Oaks Drive. Um, actually, we, I'd like to just see if you can vote on everyone except for Laurels Road, because Laurels Road is actually. That's a that's a long longer story. So we're looking at three eighteen chambers. 
261 North and 112 North. And 112 here North. Those, those are the ones you haven't heard from? Those are the ones that I have not had any conversations with and that have not been written. And that have been written, they've been written up for a while too. This is... Thank you, motion. Motion made by Ms. Collins. Second by Mr. Watson. Any further discussion? I'm not saying a warning. Wrong mouth. Here. Well, you get hurt. I bet We've been in wrong mouth. <laughs> Especially on the Millers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what's bad on. What about the Shell Creek there? Kenny Johnson was there. We've been up Sugar Hollow. Sugar Hollow. Yeah, we've been up on all those. I had some contact on the Kenny Johnson. Kenny Johnson. Cool. We have a motion and a second. I motion. All in favor say aye. aye. Um, all opposed, like sign. Mr. Chairman, that's unanimous. What else you got, guys? That is, that is the, the end of my stuff. Well, is that it? I've got some stuff. I've got some books. But anyway, let me ask that picture. I'm listening. Uh, on these people that we're buying like that, aren't there a way we can put a sign up there? Condemn them or whatever? Condemnation would be a control of the court system that we'd have to go, but under the International Property Maintenance Code, we can go on the properties and do the uh, write ups, things of that nature, if it's right. uninhabitable. But we can put a sign in the yard on the road that say this place is condemned or whatever the situation. I don't know, but I'll find out on that. Because these people, they just like that. these people have got seven or eight cars sitting around their house. And they can't drive them. If they got, you know, I go along with four cars, but you know, if you got two kids, you go around the wife will drive. But you get eight or nine cars sitting in people's driveway, I mean, yards, and they just sit there and don't move. I bet we, we need to do something now, because we just let it go too far. And we can do that as far as the sun goes, that nature, and then take it on through that way. But uh, when you get back home, Trailer park, we got one down behind the Cedar Creek Baptist Church, bad shape in it. Mm -hmm. We've been down there, and you, yeah, I get calls all the time. That's why I'm doing it. Yeah, wait. Right. Well, okay, let me ask you something. I've got some calls on storage. Uh, automobile storage, that's what they work on in the Elite America. Uh, two years or something. Yeah, if you remember a couple of court cases back, we had. Well, they put a lien on the car and it's sitting there. Uh, and the judge for the chancellor said that there wasn't much we could do about that because they have a legal lien on it at that time. Uh, but I think, you know, a year of sitting there, just like what Mr. Watson saying, that, that's ridiculous. You have to get your rats, you got everything. Yeah. People, I don't know, 300, you don't have a whole Yeah, it's pretty fun. So people like that, uh, we need to they up the place and get something done. He's got a go to try that too. You can do anything about that? No. I can't do nothing about that. I got one across the street. Thank you. It should have been dead 12 years ago. Hey, we missed one. I've got, I've got a couple calls on going up to the land bill. When you turn off the road there, I've been up there. Mr. Arnie went with me. We've been up there. And when you turn off our go up to the land bill, over to the left there, People was bad. Like and, bad. Uh, we we got here. that we got that cleaned up one time and he went to jail. And of course he's yeah. Well, yeah, his his dad or uncle. His dad's uncle. Who does the order? I can't think of his name right now. No, it's so not Miller. Work. But uh anyways. That didn't make the PowerPoint, but that actually we have recently sent them a letter in the yeah. last two months. And now his living girlfriend, wife significant other, whatever she is, she's taking the crap in. So, 
it, 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 it's bad for us when T deck goes to landfill and you got that stuff sitting there sure. and you got a free duster and you can put it in at the landfill if you would. So yeah, like Jay said, it's rode up again. I think the boys in jail again for another Push your girlfriend 25th DUI or whatever mm -hmm. it is. But now the girlfriend's sitting out there waving them in and, and get it. And she thought, you know, it, it wouldn't be so bad if every other day they take the metal off or something like that. That's cool. But evidently she can't drive either. And mm -hmm. the truck they were taking off is wrecked on the next property down below. So do I need to go with y'all up there? No, I can go up there. I can handle that. That's too easy. I've got that rope down. And we've got one over on, on the Bristol Highway, Indian Creek, where you turn up and go off the highway to the right, sitting down under the bank there. Yeah, we've already got it rode up, and uh, we've been dealing with the, they rent that piece of property. And uh, we've been dealing with a lot of the homeowner, but uh, it's a unique case. As soon as they clean something up, the next thing you know, three days later, they're back dirty. And so, what I'd like to do is we'll give them one more chance and then go back after them and go out the court. We'll, we'll do that next month. That's all right. Ladies and gentlemen. I think we're sitting on a hill too much and we need to get pushes back. I can't really do a whole lot about vehicles because the latest vehicle resolution we have. Ex-mayor killed the bill. It, yeah. Well, and we had a former one that defines an autumn, autumn, what's it, Abby, what was it? Automobile graveyard. Automobile yeah. graveyard. Mm -hmm. But that definition is ambiguous, and our current letter resolution says nothing about vehicles. So all I can do for vehicles really is zoning, and Chancellor has agreed to hear those, but like the one on Indian Creek, it's zone day one, so he probably wouldn't do anything about it. And Kenny Johnson, I can't do anything about because the state lets him do whatever he wants and they don't do anything about it. So, and well, we can still work on We'll talk to Josh on those, those uh, four he things. He can go five things we we'll go for. And we need to take Josh with us to court. He's going to I know he's going to be there. We need to bring this stuff up and get something done about it so that he hauled him around. Yeah, let me talk to Josh on that again. And, uh, He's got a bunch of short for the sugar over there. Yeah. There's no excuse for that. No. Nope. Got an under dirt dirt lane. Under that mine there. I got the event. Mr. Chair, I think you would find support on the current commission about changing uh, our environmental uh, court issues uh, in a way that repeat offenders are find more. Uh, I know that Commissioner Holden reached out to me in the last commission meeting uh, indicating that there's a property in Milligan, in the Milligan area that she passes regularly. They'll clean it up and then a month later it's as bad or worse than it was. Dr. I'm glad you brought that up because she messaged me about it. What that, that's an apartment complex that I'm sure is a low rent a low rent apartment complex when someone moves out they pretty much take all their stuff and just throw it in the parking lot and then i write a letter to the owner uh, a litter letter and they have it cleaned in a week and they do it again and i've told her that or i told uh, commissioner holder that for the most part um, when it comes to new litter i can't really present that to the chancellor because the chancellor wants to see a, a constant problem of, of the same trash and I don't know how we word that in a resolution but as the resolution stands now once I rewrite once there's the trash is gone and new trash is set it's like I'm starting all over again and so I, 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 I would spend if I did it the way those commissioners would like me to I would be uh, that's at the it's right at Cold Branch and at the end of Milligan Highway or Milligan College I would be there once a once a week, and it would always be new trash. So I don't I don't know I don't know the turnover of their tenants. It must be ridiculous. But I don't understand how you have tenants like that unless you put them in there long enough to get your deposit and kick them out. I, I, I really don't know. I don't know if they're leaving or if they're being kicked out. But either either way, I, every time I ask the the apartment owners to clean it up, they do it. And so when I go back and it's like that again, I'd have to restart the process. And, and that's... It's the same 
And that's and then, of course, the same problem. You have the only difference is the trash and the kids. The same house will have those kids for 30 days, and then when the rich comes to you, you've got another set of kids there. And they just roll them up. And they just stay long enough to. And I, and I don't know the best way to, to reword or to change the environment, the resolution to say something about repeat offenders, but if I present the chancellor with pictures in February and then it's cleaned up and I've given them different pictures from March and then that gets cleaned up and I give them different pictures from March <coughs> by the time I get there, I don't know what his thing is because he's been ordering these people to clean up the current mess, not... Um, you know, I, I don't know. It, it's it's a conundrum that I don't understand, or I don't know the best route to take. We'll talk talk to Josh about the visuals, and uh, but I did talk to as far as Mister Mulder about change your court and put a uh, uh, kind of red on to to make it you know quick and dirty instead of having to wait. That time. would be a, maybe a situation where a citation would be good if we could ever. Or on the edge. We can ever get to that point where they just give a citation for the mess as opposed to me giving them two months to get in, or three months by the time I get a court date to get something. We'll look out for that. We'll get you a name. We've got to get this to Yeah, we'll get you a name. We've got 13 things right here. So, thank you, Chuck. Jay. All right, Miss Color uh, wanted us to go ahead and cover uh, Bishop Circle, Mr. Hall, which we did last meeting, the meeting before last. We had Bishop Circle sits between State Line Highway and Bob uh, or excuse me, uh, Bob 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 Road, which sits below uh, Colonial Lake. All the drainage from the lower portion, the, the eastern portion of, excuse me, the eastern portion of uh, Colonial Acres goes into two retention ponds. About 12, maybe 13 years ago, uh, we cleaned the retention ponds out. Prior to that, it was about 10 year period we cleaned them out. They have not been cleaned out in at least 12 years that I know of since that, that uh, the former road superintendent had it cleaned out. And I can show you where they're at. I can walk you straight to them, that's no problem. Uh, long story short, that water comes down, crosses Bob Little in two places, intersects into one and goes into the Bishop Circle area. The gentleman, Mr. Hall, who lives in the house, is located over here. Uh, he and his father built this box drain area which is more of an open brick and uh, concrete coal which is actually sitting over on this piece of property to the left it does not meet the seven and a half foot on each side drainage easement the original property of uh, mr halls uh, actually has stream running through it it was diverted down the property lines back in the late 50s, early 60s when the subdivision was built. Long story short, you have a drainage culvert that comes across and drains into this concrete raceway. These are the open ditches going down to where the concrete raceway is. If you notice, this is in front of the Hall's house. He has took sandbags to block this up to keep this water that comes across and comes down and this concrete raceway is right on this wall. He has blocked those. He's also blocked above his driveway with cinder blocks and wood to keep water from coming down in front of his house. On the roadside. On the roadside, which is actually the drainage area. Well, I mean, he used roadside. No, roadside, yeah, he used roadside. But uh, anyways, long story short, the mayor has talked to the county road superintendent and we're going to go up I'm going to show them where those two catch basins are again. And uh, hopefully we'll do that in the next day or so with the mayor. And if it's still, the problem is still there, then we'll, we'll take two or three vehicles and take the media up there. 
Yeah. And if you see this, this is Mr. Hall's house. This is the house that the concrete wall goes down and the, the cement runoff. The property line runs kind of like that. So it's all over on the other guy's property. But Mr. Hall admitted that he and his father did that. Last year, I discussed with Mr. Hall and coming in here and uh, cutting all this dirt out, which would be about uh, two foot to three foot high by about four foot wide, and to put another wall up. That's what he wants to do on his property line, to open this up and allow the water to go. This is what he did. He stacked some of those uh, little retaining blocks up, didn't remove any of the dirt. So what's coming is this is coming in, water's coming this way and this way. It's piling up and it's going into his yard right in here. It has no way to escape because he's put this wall up now. So it can't go back into the drainage area. What about so, the water coming across the street? The water's coming across the street right here. There's a drain top that runs across the street right here. Is that here. not really big or big ditch or something? That ditch was originally a, a, a French drain. And the pipes had collapsed in it, and he opened it back up just to another ditch. <coughs> Which. And the guy on the other side of the house, it's, it's a lake up there. I went up there. It's, it's, oh, over here, across the road over here? No, yeah, well, just two houses down from the brick house. The brick house, yeah. If you can't Head see it. Heading <laughs> Head back towards the bottom of the bury. Bury, yeah. I, I went up there. I mean, the side of his yard was just saturated. Yeah. Well, if you follow this all the way down to where it crosses Bob Little, that was originally a problem. I went out there myself and dug it out and borrowed a piece of equipment, went there and cleaned it out. Uh, about, I want to say, probably eight years ago, plus or minus a little bit. According to Mr. Hall, that's what caused the problem. <laughs> the outlet for all this water that comes down and that's what he wanted it was backing up and backing up into his backyard so it doesn't back up into his backyard anymore that was taken care of and uh, you know he's complaining about the ditch line here well that tile was there before the house was there and uh, it used to run this way through there the little stream and come in and connect back behind his house well he had his father he went in there and straight lined everything and it's hard to make that 90 degree turn that runs behind his house with what they've got in there. And of course, it hits and makes these two houses. It gets bigger behind that. Huh? It gets bigger behind Yeah, it gets bigger, taller. It doesn't get any wider, but it does get taller. So we've worked on a problem. Hopefully, we can get up and get the highway department to do the maintenance on the catch basins. R.H. Taylor signed off on them. So it is ours. And it's, it's noted on the plat downstairs that, you know, I'm sorry guys. Well, I guess all my other people don't want to get into it with Mr. Hall, but they're not happy either with all the water coming down here. This, these, these people? Yeah. Yeah, I agree with them because well, it's all over our You can't, you couldn't even get a, his riding mower through it because it was so... Yeah. I mean, you just sunk down. When he went back, that's all went up there. His mower got stuck. And uh, my husband went up. Where, when you work on those retaining ponds, will that stop this problem? That will, reduce, that will reduce quite a bit of the water there. 12 years of leaves, uh, runoff, chat from the coast, all catch basins up there. You got chat from the highway when they go and spread it for the winter. You got all that stuff. There's been a little bit of construction up there, but I can't remember anything red running off as far as dirt. But you do have garbage and things of that nature that gets in those. So you and the mayor will go up there. And me and the mayor will take the county highway superintendent up there, and hopefully we can get some kind of resolution. It's not going to stop the water from coming down there, but it's going to reduce it quite a bit. And something else for what, 16 inches now over? Or year, nearly 18, whatever it is now, it's quite a bit, but neither here nor there, it would be good if, you know, this was opened back up to the property line and get rid of that little wall system in there to let the, all that water go, then it should be able to help quite a bit of all this, because this is blocked up higher than this side, 
which is letting any water that comes over extra come in on this piece of property here so it doesn't saturate the ground. Concrete's great, but it's not good to. Where's the water ground. coming from on the Berry House behind him? It's backing up. She backs up. From this right here, it's backing up that way. That's kind of uphill. Back yeah, no, there's another ditch that comes down. It comes off of Bob Little that goes on around from the Berry House. That yeah, house around there. that truck. Yeah. And there's another ditch that comes down there off of Bob Little between two houses there that's concreted just like this. But when this one backs up, yes. it, it all down. backs up. Yeah. It backs up as far as my house. The other side of the barriers was so, yeah. you couldn't even tell where it was. It was so yeah. weeded up. He said it backs up to, up to his house. Yeah. It, 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 exactly. it's, it's just a, but if you didn't know where these were painted or what, yeah. if you didn't know where they were at, You'd walk over the top of them, they're fine. That's right. Right now. I think if they could do fix those, that water off the plumbing, they must be a lot of water come off there. Oh yeah. yeah. Really? If you could do something there, that might solve this problem. I mean, it's I mean, not gonna solve it, but it'll help it tremendously. Yeah, it floods, but yeah. Yeah. So as soon as you set up the meeting with me, you and Roger, tomorrow or the next day, let's let's see it. Yeah. Well, I just had to be up there when it was actually the first Ms. time. Collins. I just built a house somewhere across the road from on the left other side of Bob Little. I've sowed my yard four times this spring and it's washed away all four times. Uh, he don't have a drive right here. He, might he started his own problem. Right yeah. If it's coming down off of a, a subdivision down onto their property. But water runs down here. And you're gonna not want to stop water running down here. But he created him and his daddy created this whole problem right here. Mm -hmm. First thing they build it over on somebody else's problem. That, you, you can't fix stupid. It's the only thing I'm gonna say. Yeah. This one's built over here. But what you're saying is Collins, and I understand and it may be as much as reopening some of these ditches and cleaning them out to help that water facilitate it to move on downstream. Where's, What's, where's Parker? Sir? Parker right there on the left. Yeah. Is this Carpenter here? Brad Carpenter. He's okay. Brad from Hampton, Illinois. Okay. Brad? Brad. Or Brandon? Brad. But me and the mayor will be on that. Just see if you can get Roger lined up and you and him go look at it. I'll take the product. I'll take the first brush action. You wear your boots. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I got one more thing. I think I called you about uh, 11 minutes right now. Uh, about the creek, get creek down there. Oh, yes, ma'am. I went and looked at that, and I have a solution for her. She wants to. Uh, Wants to uh, do it. She can do it. I've already contacted T Deck, discussed it with them. They told me it was fine to do it with Tom Isaacs. So, and I, I, I apologize. That's okay. So much you said, yeah, Johnson's about throwing it back Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, one of the things that you've talked to, uh, if, you, if, if you talk to Mr. Johnson, he's going to talk to T Deck. Okay. And I was going to bring this up at the highway meeting, but what what is the protocol for getting the creek to be dug deeper up near the paved property with that grass in your right yard? And cross your road every time it rains down. It just, I think the it county just accepted that road. Actually make a, a, yeah. an actual creek bed. When the county accepted the road, they also accepted the drainage off that. And all that Roger has to do is request a general permit to allow him to go back in and excavate that out and get it. If that was excavated out all the way to where it turns and comes back across, that from the paid property, and I forgot the next people there, but yeah, rice. Rice. And, and, and get that turn, it would, it would help tremendously. Well, I mean, what they've done is they've just mowed their yards down to the creek, so mm -hmm. then when it comes up, it just goes, but if you dig it out deeper, mm -hmm. I think that would solve the problem. And, uh, you probably went all that first, all the water meters there in the big creek bed. Yeah, it's interesting. Because it's just washed them. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's on the uh, David Page server. Yeah, call and come out there for a general permit, but that's all he has to do is apply for a general yeah, permit. Yeah. Right, thank you. All right. Anything else? Yes, sir, Doc. A couple of things. Any 
movement on Alania Court is coming through. Alania Court, we're still waiting on that. I mentioned it two weeks ago. The dentist said he hasn't had a dentist Pierce to serve her. He hasn't had time enough to get up there. Uh, he said as soon as he does, he'll give me a call so I can go up there and then we can go and move from that. I can tell you the survey, they're like three weeks or two months behind. So. Oh, yeah, they're, they're terrible. It's, it's terrible right now. I, I've got guys that I've talked to that usually can jump on something a little small lot that they're like she's like this color said they're two or three weeks we out. Talked about one about six weeks ago. And they're still like well, they're supposed to be there with the Yeah, he's he's swamped. The, yeah. the other thing that I mentioned to you. Yes, sir. Uh, this morning on Green Valley Road, we still got problems. All right, Green Valley, which is in the uh, Hunter community, it joins the uh, city municipal airport. Two um, years ago, we had them clean the ditches back out, and it seemed to work and help. In two years, as everyone knows, if grass grows, tangles grow, it's going to slow the water down. What it is doing, it is coming out of the uh, airport road area above the airport to the north northwest of the airport, comes down across the airport property, and then comes down to Hud's airport property. So you got a massive amount of high flow, high velocity water that's coming down. It's a flat channel ditch that they're not maintaining. The flat channel ditch has to be mowed and it has to be maintained. Uh, you can't, like two years ago, they had a bulldozer come in there and he did two or three twists in it and caused small dams about anywhere from a foot to three foot high. It stopped the water and it flooded out everybody's sitting. Same thing now, it's got to be cleaned out, it's got to be maintained. The only thing I know to do is, is to contact Mr. Estes, the uh, city manager, and have him talk to the airport manager and the mayor and see if they can't work out that they really, really need a maintenance plan on their branch. Because you can't take water, high velocity water, and put it in a flat ditch. And, and the ditch is clean, wide enough to handle it, but it's got to be mowed. It's got to be maintained. You can't have a, a you know one one locust tree eight inches around falls across it, blocks it, it backs the water all the way up. Is it flat? When it comes down and comes across where the Hunter, the Green Valley Lane is, yes, sir, it's as flat as a clear. But it's the airport's responsibility. Yes, ma'am, and that is airport property, and that is in the city. So. If you want to go, I'll be more than happy to go with Mr. Estes and yourself and the mayor, and we'll go look at it, and I'll explain to them again. But if you don't maintain it, I mean, it's got to be maintained maybe every three months with the herd, but at, at least twice a year, because we're in the spring rain season, as we all know, and it's only going to get worse. And once you saturate that ground, the same as uh, Bishop Circle, once that ground saturated, well, folks, it's circle in July. First of July, no doubt. So I'll be more than happy to go up there, and I'll be more than happy to well, Mr. Kogan a call again. But I don't mind stopping and seeing Dan Kogan and see what he wants to do or doesn't want to do. Yeah, you got to walk the property lines. It's just like your house. If you don't walk around it and know what's there. Because I had one one individual call me this morning, and she she's got. Uh, so much water in her backyard and it's been grown and it's grown up that she can't even cut it. She can't even get along get along more back there right. because it's it, it's actually sinking and so forth. So but you know that's the only way that's the only way, you know. You go across the river, you bust the clay layer, the water just disappears. On that side, I don't know how far you'd have to be to ever bust the clay layer. You know, and it's so compacted in there in that ditch line. You know, once it backs up and it hits the property lines in elevation wise, it just goes right into that loose soil and it's, it's there. Yeah. And it's the same way at Bishop Circle. That soil is just as black as uh, your mass. And it's, it's just good and rich, but it's not, you know, won't compact. So anything that's compact or concrete that forces that water up, it's going to go. If it's going to sink, it's, it's the easiest to spread. And once it gets in there and then it comes back down, then where those concrete or compacted ditches are, that water's held until it evaporates out because it won't go back into that, that area. But I'll be more than happy to go. And while we're on water problems, we have two agricultural water situations. One off the Gap Creek Road 
and the coal chute and one off of Stephens Road. The letter's been sent out. We'll go back in. Talk to the one boy's father. Finally, on Gap Creek, and he agreed with me, hey, you know, there's certain ways that you need to be able to the water, keep your cattle out of the water. And, uh, Is that their title property? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And, uh, I hadn't talked to the boy yet, but he is an insurance adjuster and he's been extremely busy over this stuff. So hopefully I'll get with him in the next week or so. And then the stuff is, I've not received any feedback from them. I'm going to send them one more 48 hour letter and go from there. So I'll give you that. Anything else on anybody's? When, when you uh, finish up with the uh, coaching, you give Bill Tucker a call. Yeah, I've got Bill's number and everything. I thought I had got the top two, so I talked to the father. He's been kind of busy too. Imagine the builder, but uh, I can't understand on that. They sold that whole pile of stuff. Which one? Bill? I don't get three right there. Get three coach. I don't know if he sold it or not. No, he didn't sell. He's got it for lease. For lease? He's leasing. That's his mom's. I thought he sold the house. No, not, not Bill Taylor. He's got it for rent right now. That's his mom's house. Up on the hill? Well, no. Oh. The house is sitting right in the corner. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's uh, Dixie Brooms. The White House? Yeah. I think they got something. Yeah, they sold the deal. Any further discussion on any water problem? Uh, Say again, sir. Riverton Road there at Harlow's. They yeah. got that problem fixed before they'll build it down and restructure that water. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a few floods. The last couple of times they had floods. Yeah, I hope Roger gets the break over that pretty soon, so don't give it a problem. That's right. That's real good. Next on the agenda is correct report. Uh, as you know, we've been working the budget. Been going to the meetings, uh, taking care of that, uh, helping everybody cover the bases. Uh, but the good news is that Mr. Cook, right there, raise your hand so everybody knows who you are. <laughs> Not only is he a certified plumber, plumbing inspector for the state of Tennessee, both residential and commercial, but now he is both certificates on mechanical. So he can do HVAC and everything, so let's keep it. And if the budget passes and the uh, employee's uh, initiative raise goes through, it is within the uh, calendar year, so guess what? He can get a nice little pay raise. <laughs> and, and he is a good father. Uh, but other than that, we have no public reports. Ms. Cannon, nobody called in? No one's request to call me. And we're sitting pretty good. I got a bunch of notes here. I hate that we had to miss so much, but I'm glad we got to meet and not have to zoom in. I hate those meetings. I hate them in the army. I hate them today. But anyway, so we'll get through it. But uh, we'll move forward to that. No public quarters. Does anybody make a motion for adjournment? Motion. Second. Motion by Ms. Keller, second by Mr. Ralph Watson.